Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at this. This is the Apple Maker RT100. It's a brand new keyboard from Apple Maker out today, and I wanted to give my first impressions of it because I think there's a few things that you should know about it. Now, full disclosure, Apple Maker did send this keyboard out to me, so I've been using it for a few weeks, um, but as always, when I'm given hardware to review, I have no obligation to make a video at all. I have no obligation to say anything specific in this video, and I'm not showing this video to the manufacturer ahead of time. They're seeing it at the same time you are. So with those disclosures out of the way, let's do a quick little overview of this keyboard. So first let's talk about the design. Uh, so the design is definitely going for a retro aesthetic and I don't know if it's exactly what I would go for, but I think it's definitely going to appeal to a certain group of people. Um, and of course, because it's a mechanical keyboard, you can swap out the keycaps if you want and you can really customize it. So if you've had your eye out on a specific set of like retro style keycaps and you just didn't have a keyboard to put them on, this one might be a good option. And then in terms of functionality, it's a full-size keyboard, uh, which means it has the number pad and everything, and is, I, I think, technically a few keys short of 100% keyboard, but in a world where 40% keyboards are very popular in mechanical uh, keyboard land, uh, this is very, very large. Uh, it does have a knob because it's 2023 and it's a new keyboard, so you gotta have a knob up there for volume controls. It's okay, it's actually pretty chintzy. It's probably the cheapest feeling a knob I've ever used personally on a keyboard, um, but it gets the job done. It does the things that you'd expect. Up here at the top, you do have switches for on off mode as well as Mac versus Windows uh, that are nicely labeled. Sometimes these switches are just not labeled and that drives me crazy, um, but they are labeled here. And then you have some lights for num lock, caps lock, and the battery level. So that's all good. Along the back, you have these rubber feet so it doesn't slide around while you're typing. And then you can prop it up with two different levels of uh, kind of back feet and you can just get really get the RSI issues going by like typing like this. I don't like that, but I know some people do, so that is there if you'd like it. And then in terms of connectivity, you have three different options. You can do a wired connection over USB-C, uh, which is nice. It comes with this kind of like retro style cable as well in the box, that's kind of cool. Um, you can do Bluetooth paired up with up to three different devices. And back here, of course, there is, I love that Apple Maker basically always does this with their keyboards. They tuck away a little 2.4 gigahertz uh, wireless receiver that you can plug into your Mac. It's only USB-A, there's no USB-C one, but it's a USB-A connector you can just plug into your Mac, Windows computer or whatever, and just use it that way. And then in terms of customization, uh, it is a hot swappable board, so you can swap in your own key switches if you'd like. And of course, as we mentioned, as with every mechanical keyboard, you can swap in your own key caps uh, as well. Um, it's not meant to be taken apart. I think you could maybe crack it open if you really wanted to, but I don't know if it's gonna go back together, so I'm not gonna do that. Um, but yeah, it, basically in terms of customization, swap in the key caps if you want, and hot swap in the key switches uh, if you wanna customize those. In my experience, I've tried the different couple uh, key switches in here, and they all sound a little bit more on the thawky end. I think the all plastic build contributes to that, but I think they actually sound pretty good in here uh, if you have enough switches to fill a board of this size. Now, when I took out this uh, little adapter, you may have noticed, you probably couldn't see on video, but there's a second USB-C plug here. And so what's that about? That is for this little guy. This is a tiny little like one inch screen that you plug in to the keyboard and is supposed to be able to show you pictures or GIFs or like system information about your computer. And it's kind of awkward, it's kind of weird, but it's definitely a, a unique thing um, that makes this a more interesting keyboard than it would be otherwise. However, this is where we get into the biggest disappointment for this keyboard for me. And let's switch over to the computer to show you why. Okay, so the keyboard works completely without any custom software. You can just like pair it with your computer or plug it in and it'll just work like a normal keyboard. That's fine. If you want to do something with the screen, you have to install the Apple Maker app, which uh, they call the Apple Maker RT100 driver. Um, and basically you just install it for Mac or Windows. There's versions for each. And my frustration starts with the Mac version, which installs, requests access to like low level system stuff. And that doesn't recognize the keyboard. I've tried a couple times, I've uninstalled, reinstalled, um, connected the keyboard every single way. It doesn't recognize the keyboards there. So I have no idea how it works on the Mac because I can't get it to work. So now we're on Windows and it works a little better here. Well, it actually works here, so that's a lot better. 
And uh, there's some stuff here you can do with like mapping keys and stuff. I don't really care about that. Uh, sketchpad mode is the uh, thing that controls the screen though. So the screen is going to do a couple things by default. It's going to show the date and time, uh, battery status, Bluetooth status, and some CPU info. So for me, it's really touch and go. Um, the date and time are correct, but the day of the week is off by four days for some reason. Um, I'm on a desktop computer, but the battery shows it's always charging. The Bluetooth icon is always there. And the CPU temperature shows zero degrees Celsius, even though it's very clearly not that. Uh, the CPU percentage is at least correct, and the, again, the time and data are right. Um, but this little kind of square here you have control over, and you can put uh, images, GIFs, you can draw things here. It's a really confusing UI, um, but basically uh, you can just drag an image here. So I have a GIF playing of, of Clippy right now in a boat. Um, but if I want to put just a picture of me, what I want to do is go over here and say delete all frames. That's going to get rid of the whole GIF. And then I can just drag in this image, right? So drag that in, and then I can go ahead and upload the current frame. It's going to upload that to the device. And then in a couple seconds, it will start showing on the display itself. So kind of interesting maybe you can find an interesting gif that'll be kind of cool to see there and this loop in everything i would really love to have more customization options here to have it do more dynamic stuff but um yeah it's something um and so it's kind of interesting and again kind of interesting to look at but all of this information i think could be easier seeing on your screen so how useful this to you is uh, i guess uh in the eye of the boulder all right so ultimately this keyboard looks distinct it's got this retro look, but honestly, I would take the screen off. Maybe you can get it to work. Um, I'm sure some people will get it to work, but I wasn't able to. I wasn't able to get any value from it. But just in its current form, it's a hundred, a little over a hundred dollar mechanical keyboard, full size, that I think is fine. It's just not blown me away. Um, so yeah, hopefully this video was helpful in getting some idea about this keyboard, and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.